How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all of your favorite franchises go down in flames? Feels great. <laughs> Kevin Smith is the greatest Scooby-Doo villain of all time. And under the mask, zoink, it's Ryan Johnson. You know what's funny? Kevin probably asks Ryan Johnson, how do I make myself relevant? And the round-headed monster said, let me show you the way, Padawan. Kevin Smith should probably change his character's name to Soylent Bob. Do you get the joke? Soylent Bob, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and ring the notification bell, baby. You savages have been great so far, so let's make this year even bigger than the last. Now, I know that I said I was done with this, but the ballad of the mistresses of the woke verse continues. When I saw this, I just had to talk about it. This just in. A lying fake fan doubles down by accusing real fans of being faker than him. But that's not even the best part, you see, because Kevin is now getting backed up by his wingman. Napoleon Dynamite's brother. Oh man, I'm so scared. Wow. I'm just shaking in my boots. Now look, this fella to the left of Kevin looks like he had to ask his wife wife's boyfriend if he could give him a ride to the panel. This kid couldn't be any more pathetic if he tried just the run of the mill shill. Desperately chasing his next payday, it's almost as if these people are morally and intellectually bankrupt as each other. Anyway, look, this panel, this stream, whatever the fuck you want to call it, was such a massive flaming cope. It was painful watching this old man covering lies with even more lies, all the while crying behind that smiling mask meme. I don't think Kevin or his Muppet friend realize that everything they're saying makes them look so much worse. These weirdos sure chose a strange hill to die on. I'm also sure that those 12 people in the audience clapping like they're being paid are laughing at you too. Because this is just 25 minutes of Kevin Smith giving people reasons to just pirate shows that are on Netflix. Because at this point, I don't know how bait and switch is not illegal. You basically trick people into paying for something that's no longer there even though it was advertised. Imagine bragging about how great women are but then needing to use a man's image in every trailer, bait and switching, so blatantly in order for people to actually watch it. That is so sad. And I said the same thing for The Last of Us 2. Anyway, Kevin Smith is done. The Kevin Smith brand is now damaged beyond repair. He just doesn't know it yet because right now he is busy sitting in his own bubble, smelling his own fart, smoking blunts of estrogen infused soy. Without a single care in the world, he's having a grand old time. Now, the facts of the matter is Kevin has become exactly what he used to mock, a sniveling out of touch industry tool. His biggest asset was his fan cred and he utterly destroyed any goodwill he had left. Good move. This situation is so next level that he needs to become its own term. Pulling a Kevin Smith. The definition should be there is no hole so deep that you can't dig it a little deeper. An example of this would be this man or woman keeps pulling a Kevin Smith so much that he's gonna end up in China. Anyway, look, this latest meltdown is a perfect example of the stages of grief. Number one, denial and mocking. Number two, cope. Number three, attack on the fans. Number four, acceptance and deflection. And number five, move on to destroy something else that people love. I'm predicting it's gonna be a woke Back to the Future reboot. Anyway, look, I'm gonna teach you ways to know if a person is lying. Number one, eyes darting around. Number two, eyes rapidly blinking. Number three, closing your eyes for a second or more. And number four, head shaking. Now watch this and try not to laugh. Oh, 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 oh Batman is in here, man. He's here on the screen. Oh, hey there. I, uh, I just want to put out there that you know, there's 130 other episodes of Masters of the Universe that people can watch if they don't like your five. You didn't go and take their DVDs away. I went through this as a big Star Wars fan when they Disney erased the expanded universe. And I was like, my, my Timothy Zahn book is still on the shelf. I can go read it. They didn't come here and take it. You know, so like, I'm sure in those 130 episodes, there were some episodes, uh, that people didn't like and you just don't rewatch them you know there's a ton of he-man out there and that's awesome you know? more as well like if you know it's like anything else like this is not mine i didn't create it right. stuff 
Oh yes, the f you. Don't buy my sh strategy. That works every time, right, you Humpty Dumpty? If you don't like something, don't talk about it. That is such a brain dead take. Imagine that same idiotic logic with the whole Me Too movement and his good friend Harvey Wiener. The man is so terrified of being cancelled for furiously misogynistic material that brought him to the dance in the first place. And by the way, he knows where all the bodies are buried when it comes to his friend Harvey. Because make no mistake, this is Kevin's attempt to try and appease feminists since his friendship with Harvey was revealed. So this is probably a desperate attempt to try and make up for that anyway. If you don't like something, don't talk about it. There's so much wrong with that statement and I wouldn't even know where to begin. Okay, look, people talk about stuff they're passionate about and want it to be better. I know crazy concept. The people who are talking about it are often the ones providing the valuable feedback. Only a pot smoking fool would ignore it. And by the way, just to make my point even further, Kevin Smith, the same Kevin Smith, who's telling the true fans of He-Man to shut the f*** up. He is literally the same person who shat on the Phantom Menace and George Lucas, saying how much that George Lucas had ruined Star Wars, and if I recall, he made a whole episode on it in his Clerks animated series. So it's okay when Kevin does it, see rules for the Hollywood elites, but not for thee. And can I just say that George Lucas handled the prequel criticism way better than these man babies. Anyway, let's get to the next clip. Roll it. Ow we do it in episode one is he gives his life he sacrifices his life now uh, you know i've been accused of lying for saying that uh that i'm like he man does no ste stepping aside i if he if if he man giving his life for the entire universe is stepping aside then tony stark stepped aside jesus christ stepped aside like it's a messianic moment and if you follow like you know a, a classic literature the hero's arc like bless you it's where the hero has to go. Eventually, you have to sacrifice your life for some greater cause than you. Ho, do, do. He's sacrificing himself for Eternia. That's heroic, do. Okay, let me make this perfectly clear. Adam and Skeletor were basically cameos in their own damn show. If He-Man sacrificed himself at the end of the show, that would be different. But you took him out right from the start. That's called moving him aside, my friend. He-Man stepped aside the same way Joel from The Last of Us stepped aside. If you saved that sacrifice for the finale of episode five, maybe then it would have had some weight to it. But doing it in the first episode so that's just blatantly killing off the main character. I don't care if he comes back in episode 7 or 8. It means nothing because you removed all the stakes. What's to say he doesn't die another 20 times? I mean, it means nothing. Now, someone made a great point, though. If Tila Zilla walks out because she was lied to, then how can he be surprised when the fans are upset after being lied to? I mean, they have the right to walk out, too. <laughs> anyway, look, somewhere in the stream he tells all of us to grow up this guy this guy is telling us to grow up says the man who dresses like an eight-year-old in his dad's hockey jersey the 50 year old guy wearing a cap backwards and crying like a little girl during teenage dramas is telling other people to grow up i mean the audacity of this grease ball and on that bombshell manics out